presents Leonardo da Vinci, inventor, artist, dreamer, an exhibition 500 years in the making. Enter a world of wonder and innovation. Explore 30 of da Vinci's ingenious inventions built according to his drawings. Marvel at the engineering and artistry of his extraordinary creations. Journey into one of history's greatest minds, Leonardo da Vinci. Tickets at CaliforniaScienceCenter.org. Charged with style. The fully electric Audi Q4 e-tron. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. For the past month, you've seen the stories of KTLA's top four remarkable women based on your nominations. Now find out who's at the top of the list when we name LA's most remarkable woman. Tuesday at 11 a.m. on KTLA 5. Good morning, I'm Lena Bovian here at Malibu. Coming up next, more rain is on the way and Topanga Canyon here remains closed from the last storm. What piece, excuse me, what Caltrans is saying about this closure, that's next. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. Another setback for the LAX People Mover. It won't be running for a little while longer. The reason behind the latest delay just ahead. I'm Eric Spillman. Biden and Trump pay visits to New York at the very same time with very different strategies and themes. I'll have the latest on the campaigns. Good morning. I'm Jessica Holmes. Uh, I know we're in the middle of spring break, but people are starting to plan their summer trips. And it appears a lot of folks considering the same destination around the very same time. We'll tell you where this hot spot is. Good morning, I'm Dana Devitt in for Sam. It's all the Beehive can talk about, and apparently it's all the newsroom can talk about as well. Beyonce releases Cowboy Carter. We are gonna break it all down for you coming up in the Entertainment Report. Stay tuned. Eight o'clock on a Friday. I'm Henry DiCarlo in for Mark Krisky this morning. We're taking a live look into downtown and we're seeing a little more sunshine now. We do have some low clouds, some morning fog out there, all of which will settle into a partly cloudy day. By the afternoon, we'll start seeing more clouds creep in. The winds are going to pick up. We have a storm. We know that. We've been talking about it all week long. So enjoy uh, a cooler day than we've seen uh, prior this week. But for the most part, Kirk, at least we're dry, but that changes overnight. Lots of rain for the weekend. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Henry, Girl, thanks very much. Uh, Los Angeles. A crash in the Malibu area right now. Investigators on the scene say that it is a deadly crash investigation. So this is again, Malibu near the Malibu Beach area, the Pacific Coast Highway at Cross Creek. Uh, both sides of PCH are shut down. They're shutting down westbound lanes and now eastbound lanes as well. That investigation still underway. We'll keep you posted as we learn more. And now for drivers in the Inland Empire, let's give you a look at how your commute is coming together so far on this Friday morning. As you can see, some trouble spots there, the 10 near the 57, the 71, it looks like along the 60 and the 91 as well, but generally seeing some Friday light conditions on this holiday weekend. Well, that is the latest on your morning commute. Frank, now back to you. Kirk, thank you. As we're saying, a storm is moving into Southern California this weekend, renewing safety concerns in the Malibu area. Topanga Canyon poised for more damage after already being shut down by mud and debris earlier this month. KTLA's Alina Bovian live in Malibu with more for us. Alina, good morning. Frank, good morning. And just to talk about what Kirk just mentioned, the closure on PCH and the closure right here behind me really is limiting people getting in and out of Malibu this morning. But take a look. This is for an entirely different reason. This closure is because of the storm we had several weeks ago. This is PCH and Topanga Canyon, specifically State Road 27. As you can see, there is a closure now in effect. This closure, take a look at this map, stretches all along Topanga Canyon to Grandview Drive. That's roughly about 15 miles. It was shut down on March 11th, the last time we had a really significant storm. The heavy rain caused the ground to give away, triggering mudslides. Most of the roads impacted by the last storm have since reopened, but not this one. According to Caltrans, State Road 27 will remain closed as workers try to stabilize the slope. In the last few weeks, they've been clearing out major debris and boulders. According to a Caltrans representative, the land is still moving and still too dangerous. At this point, no word on when it will reopen, especially in light of 
the rain right around the corner this weekend. The National Weather Service expecting one to three inches of rain Friday through Sunday along coastal areas in the valleys. We could get heavy downpours, even thunderstorms. It messes with the, with the program, you know. You got to go around. Sometimes I got to, you know, find a different way to get in. It's a little, it's a little uh, um, it takes, takes more time. Back out here live, just getting around Malibu this morning. As I mentioned earlier, PCH is closed because of that accident. This closure here will take much longer to reopen, possibly several days, several weeks. It really just depends what happens uh, with the rain that we have coming this weekend. So if you're trying to get out of this area, getting into town this morning, the best bet is probably to take Canaan or Las Virginis. I'm Lena Berman reporting live here in Malibu this morning, KTLA 5 News. Okay, Alina, thank you for that. This morning, two people are dead after a violent multi-vehicle crash in L.A.'s Jefferson Park neighborhood. Investigators say the driver of a BMW was speeding down Arlington Avenue. This was just before noon yesterday when he rear-ended a parked UPS truck. The BMW then flew into opposite lanes of traffic, crashing into several cars. Two people were ejected from the BMW and died at the scene. Witnesses told police the driver then made a run for it, but Good Samaritans chased him down. Residents in the area say Arlington Avenue is notorious for being a dangerous road. It's getting dangerous now. Everybody is speeding. Half of the time you cannot cross here. I've been living here for a year and I've seen seven to eight accidents. I think that they need to put another lights in the street or bumps. A lot of these really bad collisions where people have lost a life can really be avoided if people just slow down a little bit. The suspect was taken to the hospital and treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Investigators say they found drug paraphernalia inside the vehicle. Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass is expanding the use of city land to help people get off the streets. Yesterday, Mayor Bass announced the city will use publicly owned uh, land to build housing for the homeless. The space would also be available to store and dismantle vehicles from RV encampments. In a statement, the mayor described the move as an adaptive approach to bring more people inside. Early last year, Mayor Bass signed a directive aimed at maximizing the use of city property for temporary or permanent housing. President Biden's re-election campaign received a major boost last night with the help of some powerhouse names. Meantime, for President Trump taking a different approach with his campaign efforts. KTLA's Eric Spillman live in our newsroom now with the details. Eric, good morning. Morning, Jessica. We'll start with President Biden, who wants to show that the Democratic Party is unified behind him. He hosted a campaign event at Radio City Music Hall in New York, and on stage were the three most recent Democratic presidents and a bunch of celebrities as well. Biden arrived in New York aboard Air Force One with former President Obama along for the ride. The two of them went to Radio City Music Hall, which was surrounded by protesters angry about Biden's handling of the war in Gaza. They disrupted the event inside with some shouting that Biden has blood on his hands. At one point, Obama pushed back, telling the protesters, you can't just talk and not listen. That's what the other side does. Obama said Biden has the moral clarity to lead during the conflict. He was joined at the event by former President Bill Clinton and late night host Stephen Colbert. Colbert joked, three presidents have all come to New York and not one of them is here to appear in court. The fundraiser brought in a record $26 million. Biden is either tied or trailing in the polls with former President Trump, but he's way ahead when it comes to money. At the end of February, Biden had more than $155 million in campaign cash on hand compared to $37 million for Trump. That's more than four times as much money. Trump was also in the New York area yesterday. He attended a wake for New York City police officer Jonathan Diller, who was shot and killed during a traffic stop in Queens. We have to stop it. We have to get back to law and order. We have to do a lot of things differently because this is not working. This is happening too often. Trump has had to use tens of millions of dollars in campaign donations to pay some of his legal bills from all the court cases he is facing. He's planning a big fundraiser next week at his Mar-a-Lago estate with several billionaires on the list of those invited. And he's also trying to raise money in other ways, such as by selling what he calls the God Bless the USA Bible for $59.99 during this Holy Week. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible 
We must make America pray again. Trump also recently introduced a brand of sneakers which sell for nearly 400 bucks a pair. And last year, he promoted digital trading cards with his mugshot on them. They were selling for $99 a piece. Frank and Jessica. All right, Eric, thank you for that. LAX's uh, new people mover is facing more delays. Likely won't be in service until late next year. That's according to the latest report from Fitch Rating Service. The project was originally planned for 2023. After several delays, Fitch says the people mover will debut around November of 2025. Construction is at 96% complete, but ongoing disputes between the airport and the contractor have set back that opening date. Two and a quarter mile long train will connect LAX to parking structures, car rental facilities, and public transit. Someday I want to be, a when I come back, a big contractor yeah. who does yes. big infrastructure yep. projects. Fun, yeah. Uh, you get to wear the hard hat. Get to wear the hard hat. Yeah. And, create things. And, and create things. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes if there are delays, yeah. I think they kind of hold.